Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonnieBayCrochet.com and this is video number two and also the last video for the Celtic Cross Throw. Okay, if you've been following along with the first one, you should have something that looks something like this. Okay, and I wanted to show you just to verify. I decided not to make this larger. I decided to stick with the pattern. I think that would serve you the best. And if you've gotten to this point, you should have one, two, three, four, five, six of the large cables and you should have the cross row plus one, two, three, four more rounds I should say and um, I am ending this round with the front side facing and then after we do that round we're ready to do um, the final uh, perimeter round which will kind of give it a little a little nice finishing edge um, for those of you who have done the reverse single crochet or the neural stitch, that's what I'm going to be using. Now, if you like the way the afghan looks as is and you want to make, you want to say, I don't want to do that round, I just want to be done now, that's fine. Or you can even just do, with front side facing, do a slip stitch all the way around if you prefer to do that. Um, I like to use the neural because it gives it a nice finish, but some people find it kind of a little difficult. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate how to start this stitch. When I get to the corners, I'm going to do about three of these stitches in the chain two space as I go around. Okay. Well, let me go ahead and show you a little up close how to do this stitch. Okay, I want to show you the neural stitch up close. I'm just working in a small swatch because that uh, throw has gotten so large and I want you to be able to see this clearly. When I begin this stitch, I generally chain one. I usually skip the first stitch because um, it, it avoids having a real big bulge there. And when I come around at the end, I'm going to work my reverse slip stitch in that uh, place and I will show that to you in a few minutes. Okay, so we're gonna put the hook in, working through both loops. Pull up a loop, just like you would in a single crochet. Yarn over and pull through two. The only difference is we're going the opposite direction. And I know that is challenging, but give it a try. Put your hook in those two loops. Yarn through, yarn over, and pull through. Hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. So you can do that all the way across. And when you get to the corner space, just work three of these into that chain two space. Okay, so go ahead and work this all the way around your throw. Okay, I've worked the neural stitch all the way around and this is where we started right here, if you could see that. And so instead of working another neural stitch, I'm just going to work a reverse single crochet. Let's try that again. Okay, after working the neural stitch all the way around, um, this is actually where we started from right here. So we don't have these stitches too bunched up. I'm going to go right to the next spot and I'm going to work a reverse slip stitch just like this. That will be hidden quite well once I hide the loose strand within these stitches. So go ahead and do that and give it, a, give it another chain. And I'm going to trim my string, leaving a nice long strand. And give it a tug. And I'm going to go ahead and hide this. I'll show that to you in just a second. Okay, let me show you how to make the tassel. You're going to need a book, approximately eight and a half inches long. If it's a little bit longer, that's even better because that means you have a little more room to work with. And you're going to need a crochet hook and a pair of sharp scissors. Okay, not to attach them. That's something that we'll cover um, later on. You're going to also need your yarn. So let's go ahead and take the book and I just hold, hold it gently like this. And we are going to wrap it around the book a total of 40 times. So that's 20 wraps.
Okay, I've gone around 40 times. Now if you lose track and you have one or two extra strands, it's really not going to be that big of a deal. I would still go with it. Okay, so now we're going to cut these with our scissors, just very carefully. Okay. Okay, now we have all my strands. I know it looks like a mess right now with the, the curliness of the yarn, but um, we're going to take care of that in just a minute. Now you're going to also need to cut two more pieces. You can just estimate 12 to 14 inches each. There's one and another one, two. I'm going to put this one over here. I'm going to take the first one and I'm going to try to find the middle. This is not you know, hugely a big deal. I mean, it doesn't have to be super accurate, but you want it to be, you know, in the ballpark. So I'm going to start to tie a small knot, but first I'm going to check to see, okay, I can pull that a little bit there. You want to try to make the edges as even as possible, okay, because that way it'll minimize how much you have to trim later. So I just did a simple, I'm just going to do a simple double knot and pull it pretty tightly and then do that again, okay. Now to keep these two strands from getting mixed up in with your other tassel fringe, go ahead and do a little slip knot like this so that they stay safe and away out of the mess. Okay, now we're going to just kind of smooth this out just a little bit with our hand and pull our hand down over about this much. So you have about an inch um, at the top. And I'm going to wrap, take the other strand, and I'm going to wrap it around one, two times, and then I'm going to tie a gentle knot, just not a knot, but just, just one time tie it, and just a little bit pull on it. You don't want it to be as tight as the, the knot up here, because we want a little bit to show. Now I'm going to take one end, and I'm going to wrap it around. Then I'm going to take the other end and wrap it around the other direction, like this. And when they come together, we're going to go ahead and, and tie a knot. Again, just as tight as, as the others were, not really tight on this. And then do it again, doing your double knot. Now to hide the knot so that it's not showing in the tassel, I'm going to take a crochet hook. I'm using a size I or 9 or uh, let's see, it doesn't really matter what the size is as long as it's small enough to go in through the bottom and then up through the head here. Let's try to get it close to where the knot is. And then put those two strings under the hook and pull through and the knot magically disappears so that that's not showing. Okay. Now we still have a bit of a mess and we want it to look nice and straight like this one. Well, how do we do that? This is called the magic of steam. Here's an eye steam machine. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. It's going to start heating up. Um, this is inexpensive. I bought it. Um, you can probably buy them at your local, I don't know, stores. I found mine on Amazon. Um, and it heats up very quickly, as you can hear. And one thing that I do when I put the water in, I make sure I always use distilled water. That way, if you have minerals in your well water or even in your city water, sometimes they will tend to spew out if you use and put them in an iron. Sometimes you'll notice some things hissing and spitting, and, um, and sometimes that can actually burn your garment, and you don't want that. So I use distilled water. And so the steam, well, if you can see that it's coming, it's coming out. It is very hot. And so I just put that near the yarn. It's not going to hurt the yarn. Now, if you can see, but most of the steam, most of the, um, the curliness, there's a little bit left here. It just, just falls out. Okay. I'm going to turn this off. And do be careful of those things. You can burn yourself. After I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and lay this straight and I'm going to trim. Let me see if I can bring it into your viewfinder. There we go. Back so that you can see. And I'm going to just, I'm going to lay this, lay this back down flat again. OK. 
Okay, and this does not have to be perfect. Um, as I've said before, many things in this world are not perfect. Just go ahead and give it a trim. You've got quite a leeway here. You can, you know, trim up to an inch off of the bottom of this, and we'll still have plenty, you know, very, a very good tassel. Look at that one strand there. Let's see if I like this. Oh, I do. That actually came out better than the first one. So we are done with our tassel. Done. All we have to do now is tie on our tassels. Um, there is one other thing. If you want a perfectly square throw, I would highly recommend that you block it. And one way you can do that is to wet it, um, stretch it to the size, the square shape that you like. Um, sometimes I do this by laying out these big foam uh, floor pieces that you can buy um, at craft stores. They're actually much cheaper if you go to Home Depot and, and places like that. And um, they're like inter interlocking pieces. And if you have like four to six of those, that should be enough to block the, the uh, d dimensions of this particular throw. All right, so let's go ahead. How do you tie this on to the corner? Well, it's just a simple matter of tying it on. Okay. Find that corner. And I would just give it a nice, nice firm double knot a couple times. And now I'll need to get the yarn needle and I'll show you how to hide this. Okay, now to hide these strands, you can do one or even two at a time. I'm going to try doing two at a time and see if I like the results. We simply thread these into our yarn needle. Okay. And I'm going to run it underneath the knurl stitch. And I think there should be plenty of, of fabric there to hide this. This is the back side. I'll show you what I'm doing with the, the needle. The nice thing about having a solid color is it's it's really easy to hide things in here. I might actually go down a couple more inches just to just just to make sure it's really hidden well. Okay, I kind of I think that's going to work. Let's pull the rest of it out. There we go. I'm going to take the yarn needle off and. I'm going to just carefully, carefully trim these loose threads, and that looks like it's hidden pretty well. And let me hide this other strand. I purposely went one direction for those threads, and I'm going to go the opposite direction um, for this last thread that ended the knurl stitch. And of course, I'll have many more of these to hide where I attached the various. Um, balls of yarn but that doesn't take long it's it's time well invested and um, let me put a little plug in too for my book winning at the fair where I kind of detail and go through a judge's sheet you know how to how to make the best at the county fair and um, the most one of the most important things you know, of course besides the obvious is you know of having a great design to start with and and doing excellent stitch work but hiding those loose ends, you know, if you have one loose end that is not hidden, that can be the difference between, um, let's say, a blue ribbon that stands alone and a champion or grand champion uh, award ribbon, um, or even between first and second place. You know, if, if judges find one little strand on the afghan, um, there are points deducted for that. So and even just to have a nice garment, it's nice to not have a bunch of strings hanging on it. Okay, well that ends video number two. I just need to attach a few more tassels here and my project is going to be all done. Um, if you like this tutorial, please hit that little subscribe button up in the right hand corner. Um, I would love to have you come check out some of my other designs. I have um, beginning designs as well as many, many intermediate designs for the crocheter who's wanting to grow their skills 
and keep you know keep crochet alive and blessing many anyway god bless take care bye bye